Welcome, Clima viewers. My name is Jim Lee from Clima Viewer News. It is March 23rd, 2018, and I just wrote my first article on MIT's Climate X, and it's titled Accidental Geoengineering with Ship Tracks and Contrails. Now, this is in response to an article that was posted on MIT Technology Review. We're about to kill a massive accidental experiment in reducing global warming. Now, this experiment is talking about ship tracks. Now, if you haven't heard about ship tracks, you've probably heard about chemtrails, but it's much the same idea. It's boats making clouds and clouds that geoengineer the planet. So in this article, uh, they basically go on about the you know the the benefits of the cooling effects of these clouds while kind of ignoring um, some of the glaring facts so i'm going to point these out very quickly and just run through this article for you guys it of course is posted on climatex.mit.edu and it's accidental geoengineering with ship tracks and contrails now they go on to you know talk about the benefits of this if you don't know what a ship track is, I've got a, an image of that here. Let me blow this up for everybody at home. Maybe we can see it a little bit better. All right, that looks pretty good. So this is the ship tracks here, but this is a shot from Climate Viewer 3D. It's available at climateviewer.org. So I'm gonna hop over there real quick. And what you could see is here's a image of uh, the Pacific Ocean and you zoom in here. And what do we see? We see ship tracks. So these are what they look like. And I also have a, a 367 band on that that kind of highlights them. And as you can see there, as you wipe across, it kind of highlights how in bright white the ship tracks. So ship tracks, these are uh, very large. We're talking the scale over here in the bottom corner, which you can barely see, is 50 kilometers. So we're talking hundreds of kilometers long, just these tracks right here. But these fan out and they seed larger cloud decks which in you know in in turn end up covering the entire Pacific Ocean as seen here in some cases. So the the, the general idea here is oh it's just pollution you know it's accidental geoengineering it's an accidental experiment it's just an accidental experiment. So this is not the first time I've heard this, which prompted this article and uh, this video tonight. The, the the purpose of all of this is greenwashing, uh, 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 which is a fancy way of saying, let's use old dirty technology, call it green technology, say that it's good for the environment, and we'll get away with it. Um, that's just not the case. So I wanted to run through a couple of things real quick for you. So let me get this straight. 16 ships produce more CO2 than all the cars on the planet, but global warming is our fault. And all that CO2 doesn't matter because ships create sulfuric acid filled clouds that blanket the ocean and cool the planet. Um, so, you know, of course, I take offense to this because I don't believe that any of this is accidental. And why do I say that? Well, back in 2012, the Arctic Methane Emergency Group. Um, sent a letter to world leaders and in that they said there's one thing we do know that can produce the appropriate amount of cooling power the sulfate aerosol in the troposphere as emitted from coal-fired power stations and from ship bunker fuel this aerosol has offset co2 warming by around 75 percent in the past century so what they're saying there is because this ship bunker fuel is putting so much sulfuric acid into the sky and creating these clouds that uh, ooh, that's actually cooling the planet in the past century. Okay, so they believe that those clouds are already geoengineering the planet. It's just pollution. Okay, there should be a temporary suspension of initiatives and regulations to suppress these emissions. Furthermore, in their action plan, AMEG, the Arctic Methane Emergency Group, the regulation to ban bunker fuel for ships should be relaxed while encouraging continued use of bunker fuel where the resulting aerosol emissions might be beneficial. And what they're basically saying is, 
hey man, if we can use dirty diesel fuel to make clouds that are going to cool the planet, then screw the CO2 implications of all this. Doesn't really matter that, you know, 16 ships create as much pollution as all the cars in the world. Um, you know, you're to blame for climate change and, you know, the, the boats are cool, man. They're making, they're making plenty of clouds. Um, and this all comes from the idea of something called the clathrate gun hypothesis for the nerds out there. I suggest you guys check out these links. Um, specifically, uh, the, the dinosaur farts caused global warming one here. Um, that's going to be a real treat for you. But basically it goes like this. The UK government responded to the Arctic methane emergency group and told them, hold your horses, uh, you know, more study needed. Um, this is a real thing. It really did happen. There's the government response from the UK Parliament to the AMAG boys. So, of course, AMAG was pretty PO'd about that. And uh, here's a link to archive.org, their deleted web page uh, post about that. Um, but not to be deterred, you know, John Neeson from AMAG just uh, recently. And I do mean recently. This is uh, posted uh, July 7, 2017. He went on to say, we need to have a new Manhattan project. Now, that, that I don't like people throwing that word around. So, you know, John Neeson, um, on behalf of AMEG, there he is right there grinning his, um, you know, geoengineering head off. But he, he literally calls it a Manhattan project there. And that's, that's super scary to me. I don't know about you, but they say that we should have a Manhattan project uh, to cool the Arctic. So this, from 2012 to 2017, AMEG's position has not changed. We need to geoengineer now. We need to do it to stop um, global runaway global warming, and that's a bad thing. So... Um, you know, then we come back to this MIT Technology Review article. What What's the big hubbub here? Well, they're pretty mad because instead of going with AMEG's plan, um, you know, to you know increase bunker fuel use um, to create more ship tracks, uh, the United Nations has decided to swing the other way. So they announced by, by 2020, um, ship owners must switch to fuels with no more than 0.5% uh, sulfur content down from the current 3.5% or install exhaust cleaning systems. Now, for those who don't know, if you're not a trucker, you know, if you've never heard of this stuff, trucking, um, you know, all land-based vehicles, EPA requires them to have 0.5% or lower um, sulfur content fuels but somehow the airline industry and the shipping industry have been able to get away with bloody murder um and run this dirty fuel so in this case bunker fuel is a high sulfur fuel and they want to keep using it because um you know it's going to cool the planet as they say but you know even in the their own article good reasons to cut sulfur it contributes to both ozone depletion and acid rain now there's a word you don't hear very often um anymore and it can cause or exacerbate respiratory problems but they say you know given these reductions shipping will relative to present day impacts impart a double warming effect one from the CO2 and one from the reduction of sulfur dioxide. So they're basically saying that if the UN does not allow them to continue using dirty fuel to create clouds over the Pacific, that therefore after some decades the net climate effect of shipping will shift from cooling to warming. Wait a minute. So, so let me get this straight. 16 ships make more CO2 than all the cars on the planet. CO2 is supposed to be warming, but ships make so much clouds that it doesn't even matter. So what we're really learning here is that clouds are the important part. And they even highlight that. They say that, um, you know, ships emit particles that stimulate cloud droplets to form, including black carbon, something you guys have probably heard a lot about on my channel. 
Um, and, you know, that removing the sulfur from the fuel could alter the size and quantity of these particles, which could affect clouds as well. So black carbon is something that the U.S. military uses. Um all the way back hurricane modification Masha Alamaro MIT as well um, wants to steer hurricanes using black carbon probably should have brought that up but a little off topic regardless they go on to the end quote somebody from the marine cloud brightening project and say that how um, Trump basically cut uh, you know funding for the little satellite that was going to study all of this cloud airborne uh, particle interaction stuff. Um, and I also included a link here to the et cetera group about how the Trump administration seems to be pro geoengineering. So the, where the rubber meets the road is that everybody wants cloud creation technologies, um, so that they can plow ahead towards Arctic drilling. Now I'm going to prove this beyond a shadow of a doubt. This marine cloud brightening project, it was originally known as the silver lining project. Um, you can come over to climateviewer.com and see this one, Sl Silver Lining Project, Cloud Baking Boats, Ocean Pumps to Halt Hurricanes, and how um, they've been talking about this for quite some time. In fact, uh, this is led by Manchester University, Leeds University, NCAR, Pacific Northwest National Lab, Purdue University, the University of Washington, and the University of Edinburgh. Uh, this was originally started by John Latham, Stephen Salter, and a bunch of other guys. You can read all about it here. Oh, by the way, billionaire Bill Gates chucks cash at climate cooling cloud creator. Man, that's a cool title. Um, read all the links on here. Uh, Bill Gates cloud whitening trials, dangerous experiment. Uh, Bill Gates funds cloud factory so bill gates uses has this uh, fund called pfizer pfizer is behind marine cloud brightening and marine cloud brightening hopes to make clouds brighter and whiter to reflect sunlight so um the problem is you can't brighten the cloud if there's no cloud so who makes the clouds ships how do they make the clouds dirty bunker diesel fuel why does burning bunker fuel make clouds? Massive amounts of soot and black carbon act as cloud condensation nuclei, or cloud seeds. So cloud seeds are how clouds are made. You need a little particle, water vapor sticks to that, and of course you need a little bit of static to make it all happen. So that's how clouds are made, and uh, basically dirty fuel does it very well. So, is creating clouds intentional or accidental, as the MIT article says? It's just a big accident, right? Well, it depends on whether or not you make statements like we should have less warming and more cooling contrails. Um, similarly to the ship track idea, if one determines that the clouds that are made by a pollution are harming the planet or heating the planet, and then one decides to alter, let's say, jet fuel or diesel bunker fuel, and then they do that to cool the planet, one would argue that that is no longer accidental, but intentional. So, on that note, we plow ahead with Ulrich Schumann at the ICAO saying just that. Hey, you know, maybe we should have less warming and more cooling contrails. And how are they going to do that? They're going to use jet fuel. Big surprise. Just like ship tracks, uh, they want to use jet fuel alteration to cool the planet. This, again, is fuel sulfur content geoengineering. Oh, wait, it gets weirder. I told you that this accidental thing wasn't the first time I heard such a... Um, use of a phrase such as this one from smithsonian.com airplane contrails may be creating accidental geoengineering oh my god there's that accidental word again this is starting to get really frustrating so in this one Chuck Long from CRES um, the Earth Systems Research Lab Charles Long if we want to be proper he said, you know, we might actually uh, conducting some unintentional geoengineering here. Unintentional geoengineering, accidental geoengineering. Um, everything's an accident. 
um, <laughs> of course. And he, he said specifically, I'm talking about a subvisual contrail generated haze of ice, which we do not classify as a cloud, but gives the blue sky a more whitish tint. So as we can see, that in both cases of ship tracks and contrail induced cirrus, the plan is to increase fuel sulfur content to facilitate injection of sulfur into the stratosphere. Now I've got a lengthy list of credible references from the scientific Illuminati on how Paul Crutzen and company all talked about putting sulfur into the sky, use commuter aircraft fuels doped with aerosol generators, um, dissolved or suspended in their jet fuel, uh, addition of fuel sulfur to the fuel, um, reference, reference, reference via the jet fuel, um, goes on and on the airline industry, commercial flights, and how we can use stratospheric sulfate injections with commercial aircraft. So this is similar to what's going on with AMEG and the bunker fuel and, you know, the MIT article here. Um, that, you know, they want to take advantage of pollution that creates clouds. Whether it's airplane contra contrails being accidental geoengineering or whether it was an accidental experiment with ship tracks, it's no longer an accident. And, um, and that's just the case. So they need to stop calling it an accident and own up to what they're up to. And that's, that's been my premise for quite some time at climateviewer.com, weathermodificationhistory.com. But you can read all about the history here in this article. Um, where it, where it originally originated uh, was with the Mount Pinatubo eruption and then Edward Teller, Lowell Wood, and Roderick Hyde, and Ken Caldera for Lawrence Livermore National Lab. And you can read all about that on climateviewer.com. Can Dr. Evil Save the World? A Geoengineering Tale. Um, now, this was originally written by Jeff Goodall. It was posted on Rolling Stone. It was later deleted from the internet. And uh, you really should read this tale about how um, they wrote these papers talking about, you know, global warming and ice ages, prospects for physics-based modulation of global change. So let's use physics to save the world. And by the way, this paper was submitted to the 22nd International Seminar on Planetary Emergencies <laughs> in 1997. So... From that point forward, it really has been like full steam ahead to pull off this geoengineering um, scheme. You know, let's cool the planet by spraying sulfur into the sky. So what are the two best ways to do that? Well, of course, it's ship tracks and contrails. So um, it seems the best way to circumvent international law and avoid public outrage is to continue to blame CO2 for climate change and chaotic weather while ignoring the 100-year history of weather modification and the current attempts to use ship tracks and contrail cirrus to geoengineer the planet. Now, for those who haven't been to weathermodificationhistory.com yet, I don't know why you haven't, um, but it is the most comprehensive weather modification and geoengineering timeline on the internet. And you can go through this and read all about that 100 year history. Um, and I hope that you guys will do that because our history on the timeline here starts at 1887 and goes all the way up to present. And when you start to flip through this stuff, you realize that, holy crap, there's a lot I really don't know about weather control and uh that brings us back to the story so weather control has a lengthy history it's now been weaponized and we're now in the geoengineering world where hey we're going to hijack cloud creation services by the commercial aviation industry and ship shipping industry to cool the planet and by the way um the faa federal aviation administration you know, if you were to ask them about chemtrails, they'll tell you to put on your tinfoil hat. But if you ask them what their position on contrail-induced cirrus clouds is, Dr. Rangasai Hathori from the Aviation Climate Change Research Initiative at the FAA told me, we would like to have more contrail-induced cirrus clouds by day 
and none during the night. More clouds by day, none by night, official FAA position. So that kind of got me concerned because I have noticed a trend locally, but we won't get into that. Um, but then it, it was doubled down by Ken Caldera and company in climate change and geoengineering artificially cooling the planet by thinning cirrus clouds where they literally said, hey man, we'll never even have to do geoengineering, SRM, stratospheric sulfate injections if we could just get rid of the darn cirrus clouds at night. If we could melt them away because they cool during the day and they trap heat at night. So this is a big problem for them um, because really what's going on here is they want to create cooling. One, one camp wants to, they claim they want to create cooling contrails. They want to make clouds that cool the planet and then melt them away at night so that they don't heat the planet. But the problem with this, of course, is it's always more complicated than it seems. So once again... What do they turn to? Fuels. In order to cool the planet, jet biofuel enlisted for contrail control. And in this idea, much like the bunker fuel thing, we're going to, you know, refigure, refactor, change the chemical constituents um, of jet fuel so that it gives us the kind of cloud we want, one that cools the planet. So in order to pull that off, the FAA, um, Aviation Climate Change Research Initiative, ACRI, NASA, and Germans DLR have teamed up to test a, a two-fuel solution involving low-sulfur biofuels on takeoff and high-sulfur content fuels at altitude. They are currently testing these in two major um, experiments. So far, the alternative fuel effects on contrails and cruise emissions Access 1 and 2, you can read all about that. Access alternative jet fuel test flights begin. And then over here, the next round of those is called the NASA DLR Multidisciplinary Airborne Experiments, NDMAX, or Emission and Climate Impact of Alternative Fuel, ECLIF-2. Now, basically what they're doing is they're flying up behind the planes and they want to see, you know, do some examples in situ, in situ examination of the ultra fine particles that are creating these clouds and see if they can figure out just exactly how to create the right kind of cloud to cool the planet instead of just haphazardly, you know, being pollution. They want to make sure that they know exactly what kind of cloud they're going to they're going to get. So in order to pull that off, They've talked about fuel doping. Now, the quote goes like this, applying high fuel sulfur content um, fuel at lower altitudes with, uh, excuse me, applying high fuel sulfur content at aviation cruise altitudes combined with ultra low sulfur jet fuel at lower altitudes reduced aviation induced mortality and increased negative re compared to the baseline scenario they're saying they want to make low sulfur fuel on takeoff so it creates less soot that kills less people around airports and then when they get to altitude high sulfur content fuels so that they can cool the planet and how do they do that they use jet fuel so as you can see in these patents here fuel system for vapor trail control fuel delivery system two jet fuels one tank contrail control those are ice supersaturated regions issrs um the plan is basically to avoid ice supersaturated regions where they're going to create contrails that warm the planet and you know, hey, switch to the sulfur dope and fuel and control unit and method for controlling the supply of a vehicle with multiple fuels. Two jet fuels, one tank. Jet fuel electronic control unit ECU switches between the two fuels and can literally turn the clouds on and off. You cannot make this stuff up. Rolls-Royce and Airbus patents. So 
the plan is two fuels, one tank. Be able to flip on the cooling clouds whenever you like. And that is greenwashing. Greenwashing is a form of spin in which green public relations or green marketing is deceptively used to promote the perception that an organization's products, aims, or policies are environmentally friendly. So to greenwash jet fuel, fossil fuel, bunker fuel, they tell you, hey man, it's a it's just an accidental experiment, but it's cooling the planet. It's a good thing. I mean, it's just accidental geoengineering with contrails, but that's a good thing. It's cooling the planet, man. Um, nothing could be further from the truth. So, fossil fuel says, use dirty diesel fuel to make clouds to cool the planet. Ship tracks, use sulfur-rich diesel bunker fuel to make clouds and cool the planet. Aviation and contrail induced cirrus use sulfur doped diesel fuel to make clouds and cool the planet. All same thing. So this, the problem was fossil fuel. So the solution to climate change is more fuel to cool the planet. Riddle me this. Who loses? The casual sky watcher. BBC News, telescopes worthless by 2050. Ground-based astronomy could be impossible in 40 years because of pollution from aircraft exhaust trails and climate change. Aircraft condensation trails, known as contrails, can dissipate. Become Oh, my God. So they're basically saying, hey, if we don't knock it off, literally, you're not going to be able to see the stars that your grandchildren may never see the stars. I think that should get your attention. Who else loses? The agriculture industry. Black carbon from aircraft exhaust is destroying ozone melting poles and affecting the monsoon in India. According to the Indian Space Organization, this has just recently found that at up to 18 kilometers, black carbon from aircraft were found traveling through the ozone layer and screwing with their rainfall patterns. So this affects weather, this affects everything. It obviously affects agriculture, and it certainly affects the solar power industry. If fossil fuel can geoengineer clouds, solar stands no chance. That's why cirrus clouds matter. And we must acknowledge that altering fuel to create clouds to cool the climate is not accidental geoengineering, it is intentional climate control by the fossil fuel industry. That's why I made this page, Cirrus Clouds Matter, the shady truth about contrails at climateviewer.com slash Cirrus Clouds Matter. Or you can just click on geoengineering and on the geoengineering page, it's right there next to the harp page. Um, but please look into that because Cirrus Clouds certainly matter. Climate Change Hypocrisy 101, this is the summation, this is where it all matters. The same groups pushing these ship tracks and contrail serious geoengineering conspiracies, because they are real conspiracies, are the same individuals that want to drill for Arctic oil and gas. How do we know this? The new Cold War, drilling for oil and gas in the Arctic. Lots of articles on this. Pretty fascinating stuff. If you don't know about the new Cold War and how, despite everything you've been told, the plan is to go ahead and frack every square inch of this North Pole. They may say that they want to save the Arctic. It's all about saving the Arctic. But we are literally in a Cold War. The new Cold War Russia sends troops and missiles to the Arctic as Putin stakes a claim for the region's oil and gas reserves. Counting the cost, the new Cold War, the race for Arctic oil and gas. America falling behind in the new Cold War over Arctic oil. Breitbart. Wow. 
Wait a minute, I thought the whole point was to save the Arctic, not frack it. Even John Neeson, the guy from AMEG that I was talking about at the very beginning of this, AMEG, the people who were saying, hey, let's send a letter to world leaders, let's use bunker fuel to save the Arctic, they came up with this one, the Arctic Natural Gas Extraction, Liquefaction, and Sales, or ANGELS, proposal. Isn't that just sweet? So the Angels proposal says, hey, let's go up there and frack the North Pole to remove the methane that is venting from the ground before it can hurt anybody. Yeah. And then, of course, liquefaction and sales. Turn it into liquid, sell it. Let's frack the North Pole. So even the guys talking about all these geoengineering proposals, they out of the other side of their mouth, they straight out say, let's frag. So then we find out that clouds are melting the Arctic. Cloud enhances Greenland's ice sheet melt water runoff, and Greenland's ice sheet melts more when it's cloudy. These spreading contrails may be causing more climate warming today than all the carbon dioxide emitted by aircraft since the start of aviation. Wait, so the 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 technology review article here said specifically that the co2 coming from the ships yeah it's bad but the clouds are making they're cooling so net on the net the balance they're cooling the planet but when we talk about contrails it's suddenly the exact opposite these contrails may be creating up to 5,000 times more heating than the entire civil aviation fleet's CO2 budget at the IPCC. Oh, snap. So this is like the oh, crap moment for the, the, the entire climate change debate. It's, it's not greenhouse gases, silly. It's clouds. And clouds are more important than greenhouse gases on any given day. They certainly are on the long run. They know that as well. So, contrail-induced serious clouds are trapping heat, melting the poles, and who wins? The fossil fuel industry. Of course, now that you know this, I will require you to place a tinfoil hat upon your newly enlightened head as you realize nothing is ever as simple as it seems. Be it international shipping or commercial aviation, there is a conspiracy afoot to use fossil fuel as a climate change pollution solution. Cloud creation is at the center of Arctic drilling, climate change, geoengineering, and military agendas. And I hope you guys will check this out. 10 Technologies to Own the Weather Today. It's all about the military, baby. So ask yourself this. Is it climate change or the climate changers? I hope that you'll find out by supporting the environmental, the environmental Modification Accountability Act. It's available at climateviewer.com slash nmod. There are more references than you can shake a stick at in this, re in this article. Um, this is the first article that I've posted over at MIT's website. Um, I hope to engage these scientists with more discussions like this because... Calling this an accident is no longer acceptable. Um, there's way too many hands in the cookie jar, and I saw what you did last summer. So we're going to talk about you, and we're going to talk to your face, and I hope that this uh, video has resonated with you. And uh, attack ideas, not people. If this video resonates with you, leave me a comment because I love hearing from you all. First time here? Be sure to subscribe and click the bell. The bell doesn't always work, so come to climateviewer.com and sign up for our newsletter. Remember, it would be impossible for me to do this without your support, so please join my Patreon or buy me a coffee on PayPal. And always, attack ideas, not people.